when you're teaching the horse how to move its feet and, and really utilizing that as a tool, you start all that from the ground. And then when you're comfortable with how they're performing in the groundwork, then you'll move on to the, the actual mounting of the horse and ask from the back of the horse. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Um, and I do, I do that using a lot of trail obstacles because I like, I think my horses learn faster when we can apply the skills. So I'll ride them in the arena, and I'll get the hindquarters to step under. I'll get the front feet to move. But then I want to take those things and start applying them. So, you know, I'll ask them to go over bridges, and that's kind of how I teach them to try. And then, um, you know, I'll back them through L's, and I'll side pass them over logs, and I'll go out in the trees, and we'll just weave around the trees until following the reins and being directable, until all that makes sense to the colt or the horse, and uh, so that's we get results really quickly that way. I think that's so cool. That's one thing I really remember liking as I was going over the information on your site, that you're so, um, you're really in tune with the horse, and, and obviously a horse is going to enjoy something where it's put, you know, in, in a natural setting where it can figure problems out through going over a bridge or across a log or whatever the case may be. I think it's so super cool that you integrate trail riding and all the obstacles they'll face in that environment so heavily into your training. I think that you're right, that they probably learn quicker and retain it better. Yeah, and I've got really neat results as far as, you know, Colts will go home, you know, doing things that people don't expect them to do, you know, until they've been rode for 90 days. But they just, you know, because it's become so real, they just start picking it up. And I also will have, I get a lot of problem horses come in that, you know, are bucking people off or they're doing this or they're doing that and, you know, we'll ride those trail obstacles and ride through the trees and just work on stuff for a couple of weeks, and the stuff just, a lot of it just melts away. When they're they not have a job bored. To do it. Right, and they understand what they're doing. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's totally true. I, I remember there's a, a man who, um, he has 800 head of horses at, at the least, um, he rents out horses and I rode for him for a couple of years up in Montana. And I remember there's this one horse that every single day we'd do this five mile loop and he would buck at the same spot. And finally I just realized that he was bored. He didn't want to do that loop anymore. And the minute that I gave him a job he liked, he quit bucking and never bucked with me again after that point. I think it's, it's, um, it's pretty cool that you integrate that. So when you're designing trail courses, do you keep in mind um, building the confidence of the horse and, and creating it with those obstacles in mind so that the horse can actually learn from them? Or how do you go about the designing the trail courses that you that you do? Well, I, I break everything down into building blocks. So, you know, at first I'm just going to ask them to go over a small tarp or a bridge. And then as their confidence builds, I'm going to get larger and larger obstacles to where I'm challenging them, but it's always at a level they can succeed at so that I'm building their confidence. Uh, that works really well with timid or frightened horses. If you just keep stepping up what you're doing and they start figuring out how much they can do, they actually get to the point where they're, actually, they're proud of themselves. Yeah. And you, you can just see their whole presence change. Um, and then once I get the basic foundation obstacles, then I start putting them in sequences. And we have an event around here that I host called the Trail Rider Challenge. And so then basically that's just putting those um, different obstacles in a pattern. And so they're doing them one after another. And it's just really neat to watch how their confidence builds when you start getting all of that to flow together and and we mix things up. So you might run through this and then have to stop and side pass. So your horse has to settle and get calm. And then you might quickly do um, some other maneuver and then have to come back and back through some cones. And so we mix up the speeds. We mix up um, whether they're crossing over things or, or they're maneuvering or it's something that has to do with trust. Um, it's just it's just a neat combination um, to and, I know the horses end up being able to do, I mean, more than even, you know, could ever imagine. I guess that's one of, we use that for a phrase um, on some of our marketing, um, but they really do. 